You might recall we had two objectives in tackling our master bathroom makeover. We wanted to recapture bedroom wall space surrendered to a maze of doorways along one side of that room. And in this phase one of our new design, we hoped we had brought home a bit of the flavor of our beloved Tuscany. And step by step, we were seeking to give the rest of the project a Tuscan flavor as well. It's not easy to describe what gives that region its unique and apparently universal appeal. It's a charming hilly part of northern Italy that invades the senses with the geometric horizontals and verticals of its architecture gently imposed on the natural curves of its rolling landscape. And everywhere it's a study in earth tones and muted colors tending toward rust and ochre that overlay a canvas of greenery and stone. In Italy, as in much of southern Europe, wood and timber are in short supply. The region's meager forests disappeared long before the environmental era to make way for towns and farm fields and orchards. The major plant life in Tuscany today yields important crops of fruits and olives and, of course, the grapes of thousands of vineyards. The conspicuous result is not much wood in the Tuscan decor and what little there is, is often ornately carved and shaped. That's what attracted us to the armoire we elected to put in our Tuscan dream bath in lieu of the planned linen closet. Except for the vanities that share the same lavatory space, you won't see another wood tone in our finished bath. We had to have those vanities custom made to fit the oddly sized and shaped space we had to accommodate them, so we asked the builder to stain them to match the armoire. And in the process we asked him to give me the standard four drawer model, but we had him combine two drawers on Delcia's side to provide storage for her accumulated tall containers. When it came to selecting a granite countertop, we wanted the green of a Tuscan hillside and this one just happened to have a hint of our wood tone in it. And believe it or not, the Italian company that makes our lavatory faucets is called La Toscana. The color palette in hill towns like historic Siena and the multi-towered San Gimignano is set by the abundantly available stone in the region. It's cut and used to build everything from homes to shops, to fountains and the very walls that kept marauders at bay. Inside, the homes and shops don't look a whole lot different from the way they do outside. So in our bathroom design, we started with a selection of tile. It's porcelain, not stone, but it's from that palette. And the trick is to vary the size and the finish and the angle of attachment of these tiles to get an appealing and interesting design and to avoid the monotony of a single pattern. A number of other design decisions and materials selections were less than random. Classic Tuscan homes adhere to the tradition of antiseptic white vitreous china where bathing and sanitation facilities are concerned. Our traditionally white bathtub does feature some concessions to modernity and comfort. It's deep with generous wide armrests for submerged relaxation. And that comfort is enhanced by the nearly invisible ring of holes around the bottom of the tub that allow the flick of a switch to introduce massaging jets of heated air into the water. It's almost like bathing in champagne. We put the head of the tub against the outside wall so we wouldn't have to look at the tile surround while in the bath. 
The wall at the foot of the tub, the one shared with the shower, we built of glass that offers uninterrupted views of our handiwork. And part of that view is the surprise I built in for my hard-working wife. She loves a hot, relaxing soak, especially one accompanied by her favorite television programs. You can also get a good view from one other location. For consistency, any appliance or control for water flow is in brushed nickel. Tuscan homes often use oiled bronze, but to avoid having too much of that, we reserved it for functional uses, such as lights and the pulls on our wood grain furniture. We did get the wall space we were looking for in the bedroom, reducing the interruptions on that wall from three to one made a world of difference. And that's it. The full job took two years. But there were lots of interruptions for work, and for vacations, and motorcycle trips, and for my appendectomy about halfway through the project. It was, as we've said, a long road, but that's okay. For us, it was almost like going home.